Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. And what I mentioned yesterday, I know it was, well, where, where did he get his mind? <laughs> well, and in the record of Genesis, two things that people don't realize and understand. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Now, he received, he spent six weeks in the presence of the almighty God. He neither, never, neither, neither did he eat nor drink, which indicates there was no sleep. And God showed him these things. Another time that he was speaking face to face with God and he just blurted out, show me your glory. So he did. And he put him in a place of protection. He said, you can't look in my face and live. And he let the, the, the behinder parts and his goodness pass before him. That's one of the reasons he knew he was so good. Now, in the Genesis account, there's only two men mentioned. Cain and Abel. I understand that the rabbis teach that Abel had sisters and one of those became Cain's wife. So I wasn't smart enough to come up with that. <laughs> I had to learn that uh, from, from that teaching. And, and you know, you can go to Professor Greg Stevens and learn you know, like I did and a lot of other things. But that, that's where that account came from. And then, and then, you've, then you realize how much of the account of the book of Genesis and so forth is Moses' own experience. Because he begins to write then from his own experience mm -hmm. in the desert mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the Genesis account of creation and so forth, God showed him. And it has turned out to be exactly that way. Amen. In the fossil records and so forth, well, what about the dinosaurs? Well, what about them? <laughs> They're here. And uh, anyway, I don't have time to get into all that. But the truth of it is, between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2, there's a lot of time. And, well, I don't believe that. Well, you don't have to. But I can prove it by the Bible. And that's, a, but that's a, another lesson for another time. And so we, now we started yesterday talking about going to the book of Joshua. I said this by the Spirit, because this wasn't in my plans at all. To know, to gnosko the truth, mm -hmm. to know it, have an intimate relationship with it, to where it is there, it, is, it, it comes from revealed knowledge of the Word. That's right. mm -hmm. Not sense knowledge. Sense knowledge is, well, sense knowledge. Well, I go to uh, flight school, that's sense knowledge. Now, I learn to use my spirit mm -hmm. and I learn to use my faith while I fly, mm -hmm. but I learned how to fly before I knew there was any faith. Mm -hmm. Because I was, I, I, I was not born again man. And, and I, I, I received the new birth. I, but, but now, when I, later, and I began to learn from Brother Hagin, I'm not moved by what I see or what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe. I told Gloria, I said, I know I already know how to do this. She said, well, what do you mean you already know? I said, I know how to walk by faith. She said, how do you know? I said, Gloria, I had to learn to read the instruments on that panel and not believe what I was feeling. Wow. Because a pilot without an instrument rating will kill yourself trying to fly by your feelings. Mm. You get vertigo and... and mm. wow. So you really, you really careful mm. until you learn. And now to fly, fly on instruments, I can look right here and I can see more accurately 
than I can out here. Even if it's good weather, I can still fly more accurately by the instruments because I made a transition from having to fly what people call by the seat of your pants or just the way you feel about it. Mm. Now, a certain part of the flying of the airplane be becomes natural. And there are certain feelings and pressures. But to navigate and so forth, you get to the place where, then this, this in my life has become my instrument panel. Mm -hmm. That This is where the answers are, not what I see or feel. That's right, that's good, wow. Because this is accurate. Yes. I want to show you this in the life of Joshua. Now, <laughs> the last time he'd been here, <laughs> oh, there was some big people over there. <laughs> he doesn't know but what they're still there. Because he spent the last 40 years out here in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, from the Red Sea, just walking, and in that countryside, it was 11 days they would have been there. They sent spies out to spy out the land. Mm -hmm. It was so close, they went over there. They went there. Only two of them came back with a good report. Basically, because they didn't believe he loved them. He sent us out here to kill us. Those people, we are grasshoppers in their eyes. How do you know? That was not the truth. Right. We'll see the truth here. Yeah. Now, he's praying. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, and the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, My servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over Jordan, you and his people. Mm. Well, what is, what is he thinking? You think those giants are still there? I don't know. I've been wandering around out here for the last 40 years. I don't know what's happened over there. So he doesn't have anything to form up his thinking. And so the Lord has to start ministering to him in his spirit. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as I was Moses. I'll be with you. I'll not fail you nor forsake you. He had to believe that because that was the truth. Right. Look at verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Don't you say anything. Don't you say anything but this book that Moses taught him. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Don't you say anything but that. Hmm. Now, here's, here's what God's saying to him. What I said to Moses, you live on. Mm. Okay. What's he saying? That's the truth about this, not those giants. Come on. That's right. But you shall meditate there in day and night that you may observe you may see in the book mm -hmm. what to do. Not what you think or not what you think when you get there. Right. This is what you think now. Okay. Right. You stay in the book night and day and then you'll see it. Mm. You'll observe to do according to all that's written therein. Then the, thou shalt make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. Now that'll work. I don't care if you're going into combat or going into business. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. You stay with, truth, stay with the truth. The prospering truth. Prospering. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? In other words, buck up. Oh. You're going to war in the morning. Okay. Mm. 
Mm. But you got something you need to do first. You need somebody, some go, go over and spy out that land. He knew better than to send 10. <laughs> now he and Caleb were the only one there, so, so he sent two. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. Wow. Oh, Lord. Now we find out the truth of the situation. Amen. He went into Rahab the harlot's place the, the two uh, spies did yes. mm -hmm. and hid out in her place. Verse eight, and before they were laid down, she came up unto them on the roof and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Mm. That isn't what they believed before. They believed what they saw. Yeah. And they, they, it was, they, they were grasshoppers in, God, in, in their yeah. eyes. Yeah. Mm. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. They heard they that. Heard mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. You think they were just out to lunch someplace. They've been talking about it for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonder where they are. Mm. They could have walked in there and never fired a shot. Mm -hmm. They were so scared of them, they would have bowed down in front of them. Mm -hmm. Any God that can split the Red Sea and destroy Pharaoh in it, we'll, we'll, he'll be our God too. Mm -hmm. But they said the land is flowing with milk and honey, but they didn't believe it. Mm. It wasn't true to them. We know God said that, but that's not true. Wow. That's not true. The people are too big. Mm. People, God has known big people all along. <laughs> <laughs> he was here when there were some really ugly people on this planet. Look at this. When you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings, the Amorites, they were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard, soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there any remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Yes. They had to battle one and didn't know it. Didn't know it. Oh That's what God. I wanted you to see. I see that. I see Jesus. They had to battle one. They, what'd they do? They gave the enemy to do the same thing that's happening here. What? In the book of Numbers, we find out what happened. They gripe and belly ached, belly ached, and belly ached until the Lord had to get them out of there and just go ahead and have them die and come on into his bosom rather than just totally destroy them. Joshua took over. Now, the army was made up of 20-year-olds and under. Well, what do you think's been happening over here in the enemy's camp? All those old guys died off too, a lot of them. 40 years have gone by. They've had time to strengthen up. There's a lot of young soldiers over there that that's just hearsay to them. They're hearing the stories. Now, Rahab knew it. Yeah. Mm. She said, our hearts melted. We heard that. We knew. But now they got a fight on their hands because they got a, young, a lot of young ones over there that they had, they even, even if they heard it, mm. probably didn't believe most of it. Mm. May split the Red Sea. You got to be kidding me. But he told Joshua, you stay in this book. You meditate on it night and day. What's he saying? You keep your mind on me, not what's over there. You're going into combat tomorrow. Now you stay sharp. You, do, you meditate on this book. Don't you let any fear get in you. 
You, I've commanded you to be courageous. I command you to meditate on this. It still works today. Because this is true. This is true. That 91st Psalm is truth. Glory to God. I'll show you something about that. And a, a, a lot of people miss this. Um, in the 17th chapter of Genesis, when we have the, the covenant made between God and Abram, where he changed his name to Abraham. And uh, when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, I am the almighty God. <clears throat> now, what did he say? I am El Shaddai. El, God. Shaddai. The God that's more than enough. Shaddai. The 91st Psalm. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Shaddai. <laughs> abide under the shadow of the God that's more than enough. Now that right there, is a, you can get started on that in the 91st Psalm. Of course, this is called the Soldier's Psalm. And it, it so this has worked in combat for men that have used it for centuries. Mm -hmm. The first recorded record of it was in World War One, and, uh, <clears throat> and and it where a commander commanded his troops to memorize this. He didn't lose anybody. Mm. Then then our good good partner, Keith Kerber. He's a uh, special forces colonel. <clears throat> Pastors in Wasilla, Alaska. Mm. And uh, I mean, he's special forces. Mm -hmm. Ranger, that whole thing. Well, he was recalled. We were, and we were in Alaska and he told him, he told me that he's about to be deployed again. And, and he said, I want you to pray. He said, I'm being called up into a unit. A lot of casualties, a lot of high casualty unit. So I shared that with him. And we prayed over it and then Gloria and I laid hands on him. And I said, now let me know, you call me. Well, he was there two years. And I got a call about three o'clock in the morning, woke me up. And he said, Copeland, I couldn't wait. He said, I had to call you. He said, I didn't lose anybody. He said it turned that whole, said he's turned the whole unit around. He said, I didn't lose anybody. He said, we had some, some guys that were wounded but it didn't mount anything. But he said, now then a couple of weeks after I'm gone, he said, they, it started over again. It wasn't as bad. How come? Mm. I said, well, Keith, well, the incoming commander didn't demand it. Mm -hmm. I said, you demand, oh yeah. He said, they had to know every verse on call. Mm. He called verse four, they had to come up with it. They come all verse 14, 15, long life, he'll satisfy yes. me. So, but, but he didn't, and, but I said, now there are some of those guys that, that took hold of it and kept doing it mm -hmm. right. and, and kept believing it and kept standing on it. None of them got hurt. Mm -hmm. But the others just dumped it because you were the commander and they, they did it because you demanded it. Mm -hmm. The others believed it. Now that's, well, what happened to them? They knew the truth. Right. <laughs> They'd got into their spirit, got in and they're there in signs. There's a Psalm that says, keep my commandments in your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just because I tell you to, keep them in your heart, in your spirit being. All of this has to do, but being so grounded in it. And, uh, 
Well, yeah, Lord, I'll do that. Turn to Ephesians chapter three. I'm not done there in the Psalms yet, but I am here for a moment because I just heard this in my spirit. <clears throat> for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me toward you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Mm. There it is. That's he gnosko me. Yes. <laughs> how? By revelation. by revelation. It was revealed to me in my spirit. Now the book of Revelation was a letter that John wrote to churches about this magnificent vision that he had. It is the revelation of Jesus. And that in itself, people get all buried up in signs and so forth, and there's a lot of them in there. But don't let that get in the way of, of reading the book. Right. Just read it instead of, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that's all right. Just take your time and read through there and underline some things and go back and reread it again and again and let it bless you. There's great revelation there, not just the revelation that John received in vision form. But still, that I can't get off that. I don't want to get off of it. The truth that's revealed here, it's happened to me, I know it's happened to you, where, uh, well, just as an example, I had, a, I had a vision about the creation of man, and, uh, and I saw it in my spirit and I just just saw it I just saw God holding this gray lifeless figure and as he began to speak to him into his, the the breath of life in his mm -hmm. nostrils he was just right in his face creating him mm. and then I then I saw this the first word, he, he didn't hear the creation. He became a living, the, the Kamash says, a living speaking spirit like God. And I realized the first words any human ear ever heard was the blessing. That came as a revelation to me. And then the Lord really began to deal with me about it. He said, that is not a blessing. That is the blessing. Now you track that blessing. Mm. Mm. It became the blessing of Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, mm -hmm. Jacob. The blessing, it was the blessing on Joseph. Yes. How did he know how to run Potiphar's ranch and farm and all that? He was blessed of God. And all of a sudden, I began to realize that this is throughout the entire, both covenants, the blessing of the Lord. That's when the Lord, in, in order to renew my mind about it, he spoke to me, spoke into my spirit and said, every time you write the word bless, blessing or blessed, put it in capitals. So you know it's the same blessing from Genesis to Revelation. And we're out of time again. Glory to God. We'll be back here in a minute. In 2023, join Kenneth Copeland at these free KCM events to build your faith and live in victory. March 23 through 25, come to the Sacramento Victory Campaign in North Highlands, California. April 13 through 15, join us at the Branson Victory Campaign in Branson, Missouri. 
June 22 through 24, make plans to be at the Chattanooga Victory Campaign in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Go to kcm.org slash events for more information. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories and testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today at kcm.org. Issues, plans, decisions, daily rhythms. Who knows the best way to approach life in general? As a believer, that answer is easy. God the Father has given us a guidebook in the Bible. Though how often does it seem like wisdom, specifically for the next right thing, is a mystery. Finally grasp how to get the wisdom you need for the crucial decisions you have to make through Wisdom, the Principal Thing by Kenneth Copeland. In this audio series, Kenneth explains simply and clearly how to receive God's wisdom and apply it to your life. Wisdom is the key to knowing what to do with the truth you read in God's Word. Proverbs says wisdom is crying out loudly to you. This series discusses the treasures wisdom has ready for you. Learn keys to receiving God's wisdom when a situation has you stumped and discover how to believe for a wealth of insights, concepts, and ideas to use for anything that life brings. God's wisdom should be part of every believer's daily walk. Learn how to make it the principal thing in your life. Request your free copy of Wisdom, The Principal Thing by Kenneth Copeland on MP3 disc or digital download. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. This is what happens when you spend 56 years in this book. And it, it, it anyway, <laughs> I'm glad you were here with us today. And I know you're glad, don't miss tomorrow. And we realize, go back and take last week's teaching and training and you shall know the truth. And then couple it with th this week as we, and we've finished tomorrow and put these things together, overlap the, the truth of the two because so much of this today has just flowed out of my spirit. You need to do that. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, remember this, God loves you and we love you and Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Glory to God. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org.